Okay, here I am again with Tina Tomazik and we're going to try on the Panthera for size. Can you give me instructions on how to get in, Tina? It's really easy. Uh, now for the stand, we have some uh, wooden steps here to make it easier for the people. This will be replaced, of course, by, by a metal step. We have the walk area here on the wing. Now tied it up with a carpet. We can grab hold here. Absolutely. Now the easiest way is to grab hold here with one, one arm and one here in the back or here in the front. So and just feet straight in on the floor. Feet straight in on the floor. The opening is really big. So getting in and out should really be easy. Much easier than, than with the rest of the airplane. Hey, there you are. This is uh, surprisingly comfortable. Uh, we made the airplane so it has a really comfortable cockpit for all those long flights. Um, despite the airplane's shape being very sleek and from the outside, it may look as if it's small, but I guarantee you that inside it's a really, really big airplane. Yesterday we had some customers who were actually saying that they couldn't fit in a Cirrus SR22, which is sort of the benchmark of this section of the industry, and they could easily fit in the Pantera. So it's a, it's a great complement to the cabin and interior design. Well, I'm uh, six foot two tall, uh, 120 kilos, which I'm guessing is about 270 pounds. They're about, yes. And, uh, I, can I can see that you fit I've got, quite I've got plenty of room. Can you join me in the other seat, please? Absolutely. Like most planes, it's often easier when you've got in and out a few times to work out your technique. There I am with you. Yes. Just adjusting the carpet here for comfort. Now, the, the, uh, you said the seat adjusts in this, and the seat also, as you move forward for shorter pilots, the seat actually goes up, and as you're a bigger pilot like myself, the seat goes down. Correct. The seat is on a rail. It's uh, an inclined rail. So with one motion you do basically what is requested for most human sizes. People who are shorter have shorter legs, want to sit further forward and automatically they will be also um, yep. raised to have better visibility over, over the... As we sit here in the, on the ground now, um, I feel a semi-reclined position and this is because we have a, a longer nose leg for uh, propeller clearance in flight the nose will come down a little bit and will be more sitting upright? Correct. The position we are in now is about two and a half degrees uh, pitch up mm -hmm. high versus the uh, cruise condition. Uh, so in cruise you'll have even more visibility and the seat will feel less reclined as you say. We've worked with the ergonomics a long long time. We've tried out six different seats and sitting positions so I think we've really worked out a position for the human body which works long term so mm -hmm. we don't have any uh, fatigue and it pins and needles in, yep. the, in the limbs and I'm sure you will agree with me that this position really is it's very comfortable it's feeling as you are at home in the airplane yeah. right from the start I must say that it's at least as um, as comfortable as a uh, Mercedes-Benz or a BMW well this was the whole point right um, Pantera is a long-range very efficient cruiser so people will actually use it to fly around um, the endurance is five and a half hours. I think that the typical flights will be between two and three hours mm -hmm. and uh, you want to arrive where you are going um, rested, refreshed and, re refreshed and mm. ready for the challenges. Two or three hours at 200 knots is uh, a, a, lot long of way. It's a lot of ground you can cover. It's a long way. Ergonomically, I must say that everything is, is in, in just perfect position with the armrest here, um, the throttle position and also the control stick. I, I would say about there would be neutral. Correct. And, um, you know, there's plenty of, of access to the instrument panel without having to lean forward. The instrument panel was designed um, with different sections in mind. You will see that there's a lot of layers and levels with mm -hmm. different inclinations to give different zones of information. Uh, here on top, we have the backup, uh, the backup instrumentation, which runs independent of the rest. Yes. And we have the annunciators, which of course are something that uh, pilots will, will uh, appreciate and adore. All the important thing is displayed here. Then we have two main um, pilot displays which are just booting up. In the prototype we're using the Skyview avionics uh, which helps save the cost of development. Mm -hmm. The certified, um, the certified uh, version uses a Garmin G500 based system um, which will be installed later on in the, in the later aeroplanes. In the middle we have a raised stack which also has a different inclination to mm -hmm. it. You will see that it's slightly I can coming see out that, on yep. the bottom. Uh, this is to help it with the touchscreen panel, right? Uh, the touchscreen is not 
completely vertical as the displays are, it's mm -hmm. slightly inclined so that when you have a smudgy, smudgy finger, it doesn't drop up and down. Okay. This is why we made it a couple of degrees slanted. Um, then on the bottom side, with another zone, you have the main electrical panel, the landing gear switch, the flap selector, and the climate control. See, everything panel. is so. Uh it's so within range, it's very easy to touch all of the switches, Absolutely, the starting everything. key, everything is there. We've also got ventilation, you said we've got uh, very good ventilation in the, in the cockpit for, uh, for warmer climates. Indeed, um, with, the optional, uh, with the optional air conditioner, the climate control panel controls everything by a touch of a button. You simply set up your temperature, your climate control display is a tailored developed display down here. I'll just take this camera off and we can we can zoom in there to get a little bit more information. Yep. This is the climate control display. You set up the temperature, you'll see the set point moving. We're yep. now currently 20 degrees centigrade here in the cabin and you set it to auto mode and that's it and it's doing its thing. That's amazing, amazing technology for an aircraft. Thank you. At the same time we have the trim indicator right there yes. on the same display. Um, which indicates whatever you select with our patent, patented 3D trim interface. Mm -hmm. So the whole trim of the aeroplane is based on this, on this knob, this lever. So if you push it up and down, you yep. get different trim actions on the pitch axis. Yep. So elevator trim is up and down. Then you have uh, aileron trim, left and right. Yep. And you have rudder trim mm -hmm. as well. So all is combined in a single knob, which is easily accessible to both pilots. And here are the indications. Okay, now um, for people that are getting in and out of different um, different heights uh, in tallness, how hard is it to uh, or easy to adjust the seating position? The seating position is easy to adjust. There's just a lever mm -hmm. on the outside of the seat, so on the left hand seat with your left hand, on your right hand seat with your right hand, and you just slide forward. Now the cameras we're using, uh, just to explain to the viewers, are very wide angle, so you will get some distortion because we're seeing a 170 degrees view you will get some distortion out of our uh, out of our filming but it is uh, important to know that there is quite a quite a large area beside the seat um, with an armrest and also um, a, a bit of a, a hidey hole down the side here we've got rooms for uh, for maps and and drink bottles in no, flight the, the idea for the front pockets here on the on your outside leg of each mm -hmm. pilot and co-pilot is to have a Mac pocket and a bottle pocket mm -hmm. and here by the armrest we have a dedicated iPad pocket for mm -hmm. those who want to use it. We didn't want to integrate the iPad as a primary instrument because we feel it's still not mature enough but for the support elements like approach charts, things alike, uh, quick planning, you can have your, iP your iPad just here down your side, bring it up and put it back down in the, in the dedicated panel. Now we've got, we've got gull wing doors on this aircraft and we've got this large uh, center um, console I guess you'd say this is superbly strong for rollover protection. Absolutely, the aeroplane conforms to Part 23 certification. This is also the target certification standard we are aiming at uh, in 2015. We wanted to make the view out of the cockpit um, as beautiful as possible and we decided to go for a central pillar rather than two pillars which are classic. Yep. It improves visibility, especially uh, during the night and low visibility operations near the ground, on approach, on landing and it also mi minimizes the chance of mid-air collisions. Statistics shows us that mid-air collisions pretty much all the time happen on a sideways mm -hmm. crossing. So here, basically all the way from, from the back of your head to pull forward, you have no obstructions. I'm actually surprised myself at the, uh, at the visibility, and I was initially concerned that this may take out a lot of your vision, but in actual fact, it's not. Can we just shut the doors and Absolutely. get an idea of the, the room in Absolutely. the cabin? So the doors are very easy to operate, pull down and then, and then twist, yeah. and it. everything falls in place. There's yeah. a bit of an armrest, there's two positions here, you've got one lower and one higher if you want. Correct, and already from the, uh, from the lock lever position you see that the door is locked or mm -hmm. not, and you also have this enunciated here. Yep. Now again, I'm six foot two inches, I've got this uh, camera sitting on top of my head, and I've still got probably... Um, a good 100 millimeters or four inches of, of space between me and the cockpit and I'm not slouching I'm sitting up very upright visibility wise no distortion in the windscreen which is great and um, I'm guessing I could see the ground probably uh, 10 meters in front of me looking straight and if I if I move my head to the side I can see even closer we've got the one of the pipistrel boys uh, vacuuming out there and uh, visibility is superb I can see uh, behind me um, 
amazing visibility in this in this quarter here and you can see the tail as well yes unbelievable yeah. there's still plenty of room in the back we've got our ballistic parachute pin here as well which is something uh, we talked about in an earlier video something i want to emphasize is also the lighting the lighting was also made ergonomically mm -hmm. so it doesn't go into your eyes at night we have a light panel over here with two different zones the left hand control is exterior lights like yep landing recognition navigation stroke mm -hmm. and on the right hand side you have the interior lights cabin one and two are behind us so they're touch controlled amazing um, light panels yep. which can be adjusted also to to any height and in the front we have map left and map right which illuminates your lap for the reading for the map. map reading and it doesn't go into your eyes because it's cleverly hidden here in this edge. So there's, a, there's an edge to the uh, a lip Absolutely. over the panel. So there's different reasons why we have these different layers of the instrument panel also to do clever things like that. Of course the co-pilot has a dedicated map as well and it helps yep. you look for the things that you may drop you on your, the floor. You've dropped your camera. Absolutely. I can see our floor mats are, are pulled up here from yeah. all the people getting in and out of the show. Exactly. And uh, toe brakes of course. Toe brakes, classic execution. Um, I think that uh, people will feel right at home in this cockpit and it sets up the standard for, for the view and comfort as well. I'm just going to move this camera that we've got in the front position here and move it down and you'll get some idea that the uh, the roof of the aircraft with the door is also uh, uh, covered to give you a good sun protection in hot climates. Absolutely, this is a travelling aeroplane so you don't want the, uh, the sun shining on your head so um, all the all the four passengers or four people on board are uh, protected by the sunroof, uh, which does not obstruct the view anywhere, even in turns. What you have to do is just lean slightly forward and you can look straight up. Yep. So for people who will fly more aggressively, let's say they can still enjoy um, proper visibility and, and, uh, and uh, safety good, good of maneuvering. Exactly. What is the predicted roll rate for 90 seconds? Um, quite a lot actually, because the maneuvering speed is high. It sits at... Uh, 135 knots this is mm -hmm. a full deflection speed uh, we are aiming at about two seconds for 45 to 45 mm -hmm. at that speed the airplane will be a joy to fly all the controls are push rods so yes. very direct i can feel, feel that it's everything very, is very just robust very perfectly smooth, smooth. Uh, apart from the rudder pedals which are cable driven um, and this is why we kept the central stick we want to have the best pilot's experience in this airplane as well uh, not only um, have an aeroplane that is driven around by the autopilot most mm -hmm. of the time. So we want to uh, we want people to be embraced by the experience and really enjoy uh, the feeling of handling the stick, handling the levers, mm -hmm. and enjoying flying. It feels uh, perfectly ergonomic. We've got PTT on the top, autopilot disconnect. Correct, and we have also a second set of PTTs which are mounted on the on the top of the dis, on the instrument, on the instrument panel. panel here. Yeah. So when you're flying on the autopilot, you simply rest your hand over here and use it as a push to talk mm. so you don't need to tackle your stick and it's it's a cool sensation, right? <laughs> That's a very nice uh, addition to the aircraft. Yeah. Well, I must say that I'm immensely impressed. Um, I imagine the cockpit is going to be uh, well ventilated with the um, ventilation also you've got uh, defog I can see on the, on the top of the windscreen Absolutely. I imagine it's going to be very quiet which is typical of, of many of the Pipistrel designs including the NASA competition where we were the uh, quietest aircraft in the competition in cabin noise I imagine the same will follow on to uh, to this aircraft indeed we have similar insulation measures and um, people should know that the Panthera conventional the one that's powered with the Lycoming IL390 as the prototype is uh, all come with a tuned uh, exhaust that features a mu after muffler by mm -hmm. default so noise will not be an issue I really just can't get over the amount of vision in this in this whole quarter um, it's just amazing in this position it can only get better in the air when the tail comes up Absolutely. and the nose comes down and this doesn't bother you at all right? a, I thought it would no, but because it's... you're looking straight forward and yeah. you are not bothered by that but you're losing such a small segment of vision there mm -hmm. um, that looking straight at this camera we've got mounted here um, to here is is very it's a very small area of vision that you're not getting and as you say most traffic approaches from the sides correct so um, vision is is fantastic Opening the doors again is very, very easy. Yeah. We lift and rotate. And just release and... Uh, and everything comes up. That's beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, we wish you well for the uh, day two of the show here at Aero Friedrichshafen. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for your time.
Absolutely, and we'll do a walk around on the airplane and the exterior features and clean aerodynamic lines tomorrow for all the viewers. Okay, great. Thank you, Tina. You are welcome.